The concept of free will has been a cornerstone of human philosophy, morality, and law for millennia. We pride ourselves on our ability to make choices, to shape our destinies, and to be masters of our own fate. But what if I told you that this cherished belief is nothing more than an illusion? What if free will is, in fact, a lie? Let's begin by defining free will. Traditionally, it's understood as the ability to make decisions or perform actions independently of any prior causes or external constraints. In essence, it's the idea that we are the ultimate authors of our thoughts and actions. But as we delve deeper into neuroscience, psychology, and physics, this notion becomes increasingly difficult to defend. Consider your brain for a moment. It's a complex organ composed of billions of neurons, each firing in response to electrochemical signals. Every thought you have, every decision you make, is the result of these neuronal firings. But do you control these firings? Can you will a specific neuron to fire or not fire? Of course not. Your brain operates based on its physical structure and the inputs it receives, following the laws of nature. Neuroscientific research has shown that our brains make decisions before we become consciously aware of them. In a groundbreaking study by Benjamin Liebet in the 1980s, Participants were asked to perform a simple motor task, flicking their wrist, whenever they felt the urge to do so. Liebet found that the brain activity associated with the movement began up to half a second before the participants reported feeling the urge to move. This suggests that our conscious experience of decision-making is more of an after-the-fact rationalization than the cause of our actions. But perhaps you're thinking, even if my immediate decisions are predetermined by brain activity, Surely I have control over my long-term choices and overall direction in life? This brings us to the realm of genetics and environmental influences. Your genes, which you didn't choose, play a significant role in shaping your personality, intelligence, and even your propensity for certain behaviors. The environment you grew up in, the experiences you've had, the culture you're immersed in, all of these factors, which you didn't choose, have molded your preferences, beliefs, and decision-making processes. Consider a simple example, your favorite color. Did you choose to like that color? Or did a complex interplay of genetic predispositions, cultural influences, and personal experiences lead to that preference? Can you, at this moment, decide to change your favorite color through sheer force of will? The deterministic nature of the universe further challenges the concept of free will, if we could know the position and momentum of every particle in the universe, along with all the laws governing their interactions, we could, in theory, predict the entire future with perfect accuracy. This was the view proposed by Laplace's demon, a thought experiment by Pierre-Simon Laplace in the 19th century. While quantum mechanics introduces an element of randomness at the subatomic level, this doesn't salvage free will. Randomness is not the same as free choice. Some argue that, even if our decisions are influenced by factors beyond our control, we still make choices based on our own reasons and motivations. But where do these reasons and motivations come from? They are themselves the products of our genes, experiences, and circumstances, none of which we chose. The implications of this realization are profound and far-reaching. If free will is indeed an illusion, what does this mean for our concepts of moral responsibility and criminal justice? How can we hold people accountable for their actions if those actions were inevitable given the prior causes? Interestingly, accepting the absence of free will doesn't necessarily lead to nihilism or a lack of motivation. In fact, it can foster greater compassion and understanding. If we recognize that people's actions are the result of factors beyond their control, we might be less inclined to hate or seek revenge and more motivated to address the root causes of harmful behaviors. Moreover, acknowledging the illusory nature of free will can lead to a greater appreciation of the interconnectedness of all things. Our actions, thoughts, and experiences are part of a vast causal web that extends far beyond our individual selves. This realization can inspire a sense of humility and wonder at the complexity of the universe. But if free will is an illusion, why does it feel so real? The answer lies in the evolutionary advantage of believing in free will. A sense of agency and control over our actions motivates us to plan for the future, learn from our mistakes, and persist in the face of challenges. 
It's a useful fiction that has helped our species survive and thrive. Some philosophers and scientists have proposed alternative concepts to reconcile our intuitive sense of free will with the deterministic nature of the universe. Compatibility, for instance, argues that free will is compatible with determinism if we define it as the ability to act according to our own motivations without external coercion. While this preserves a notion of free will, it's a far cry from the libertarian free will that most people intuitively believe in. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of consciousness and decision-making, the evidence against free will continues to mount. Advanced brain imaging techniques allow us to predict simple decisions seconds before the person becomes aware of making them. AI models can increasingly anticipate our choices based on our past behavior and circumstances. Yet, the illusion of free will persists, deeply ingrained in our subjective experience and cultural narratives. Letting go of this cherished belief can be unsettling, even terrifying. It challenges our sense of self, our notions of praise and blame, and our entire moral framework. But perhaps embracing the truth about free will can lead to a more enlightened and compassionate society. By recognizing the complex web of causes behind every action, we might focus more on prevention and rehabilitation rather than punishment. We might judge less and understand more. We might even find a deeper sense of connection to the universe and each other, recognizing that we are all part of the same unfolding cosmic drama. In conclusion, while the debate over free will is far from settled, the weight of evidence from neuroscience, psychology, and physics points strongly towards its non-existence. Free will, as most people understand it, appears to be a comforting lie we tell ourselves. But by facing this difficult truth, we open ourselves to a new understanding of human behavior, morality, and our place in the universe. The question now is, are we ready to embrace this challenging reality and reshape our world accordingly.